what one time conversation with a complete stranger had the most profound impact on your life. Back in 2012 I went my first solo trip to Thailand I was living in Karen Fukut. It was my first day there, and at a late night BBQ up in the cliffs, just finished my food, and was sipping a cold chan and this American guy walks up to me, may I join you? Yeah sure I said, he was a 50 year old originally from North Carolina working in D-Bay as a teacher that's wife had died, he asks Alit about me why I'm here, aspersions in life, family situation. We have a very intense discussion about life in general he was incredibly intelligent. The conversation switches to him, and why he is here, he tells me, that he bought a motorbike, and he has zero agenda, he had been biking all over Asia solo for months with no concrete plan, he pulls out a little scrapbook and starts going through the places and pictures and notes in it, and starts giving me tips on places to go, places to eat, places to stay, routes to take. I got some paper from the bar, and started taking notes on these amazing hidden gems all throughout Southeast Asia. We drink all night get hammered, and he takes off in the morning I never see him again. A few years back I traveled on a bike to one of the routes he recommended eating at places he talked about, caves, lagoons, waterfalls, hot springs you name it he recommended it. It was a hell of an adventure loved every minute, he recommended some amazing things, and I'm truly grateful I met that American that night. Great bloke hope he's doing well. I was going through a really rough time, I was about 15 at the time. I was having a lot of identity issues and family troubles, I was also struggling with dissociation. This culminated in me sobbing in a cold bathroom. I was at the sinks and a woman came up to me, and told me I don't know who you are. I don't know what you're going through, but it gets better. She offered me a hug, which I accepted. It wasn't a lot but it definitely helped me realize, that there's some genuine nice folks out there. I, F, 22 at the time, was at the airport waiting to go home, after visiting my boyfriend, that I don't get to see much. A little heartbroken, I just sat there trying to keep the tears in my eyes, but a random stranger noticed my emotional turmoil. Instead of asking if I was okay, he simply said I'm sorry to see you're in pain, can I do anything to help you? And offered me a tissue. He was such a comforting presence. We ended up talking for a while as we were on the same flight that got delayed, and eventually cancelled until the next day. We hung out in the smoking lounge together, he made me promise to quit, when I got home. He told me about his travels, I told him about mine. He managed to get my mind out of its pit of sadness, we talked about our shared hobbies, what we'd been doing in that town etc. Next day we found out we were flying to the same destination via connecting flights, and as he was a flight attendant even on holidays he was able to change his booking to be on my flight and sit with me. Our ways parted, when we lost track of each other at the third airport. I never got to say goodbye or thank him for being such an A-class human. His kindness made my trip home so much easier, and I will never forget it. Sven if you're reading this, thank you. I hope to be able to pay your gesture forward to someone who needs a friendly face someday. People like that give me hope for humanity. Had a customer at my previous job telling me about how he used to stress about being single for most of his life until a week after his 40th birthday, when he met his future wife outside a grocery store, just after he had accepted the possibility of being alone. He ended with sometimes waiting patiently as the only course of action, even if you don't like it. I think about that, whenever I'm feeling the singles blues. When I tried to kill myself in high school I ended up in the hospital, and then shipped off via ambulance to a local mental hospital. On the way there the EMT in the back told me he used to be suicidal. We talked the whole way about how he chose to live, and why and how he could tell I was a nice and worthwhile person from the little wed interacted. I don't remember most of the conversation, because I was all drugged up, but I remember feeling like someone actually saw me, actually understood, and actually cared. It was kind of a first, and it's one of my happiest memories even though I can't remember most of it. I don't even remember his name. But whoever you were, I hope your life is great, and thank you. As a paramedic who has been on both sides of that ride several times, one more than the other of course, I appreciated this post. Sometimes we have to let the professional facade of a bulletproof savior down, to make someone feel better, and I like doing that.
I was in a plane at JFK stuck on the tarmac for 3 hours, feeling kind of sorry for myself. Struck up a conversation with the elderly man next to me. Turned out he was the youngest child to survive Dachau. Showed me his tattoo. Told me he survived, because he ate whatever was left on the dishes he washed. I don't feel sorry for myself so much anymore. I've shared this story before, but I'll never forget this interaction. When I was a kid we didn't have a lot of money, so we often shopped at thrift stores. What I loved about that was that you could get 10 books for a dollar, so I would plant myself in front of the book section and make piles of which one I wanted to get, and then decided, after I'd gone through them all. One day an older lady saw me sitting with my piles, and asked if I liked to read. I told her I did, and showed her a few of the books I found that I liked. She smiled and then pulled a dollar out of her purse, handed it to me and said, promise me that you'll keep reading. I was so happy, and immediately stood up, and said that I would. She smiled and walked away, and I went back to my piles able to pick out an extra 10 books to take home. It was just a small act of kindness for her, but for me having a random stranger encourage my love of reading and making me promise to never stop definitely had a lot to do with my continued love of reading. This was over 20 years ago, but I still think of her whenever I buy a new book. My daughter was born, and she wasn't breathing when they took her from us. I assumed she was dead, but she wasn't. When they took me to the NICU she was tubed with all the scary monitoring. All the other babies were in incubators but mine wasn't. I remarked to the nurse that that felt like a good sign. It was a gut punch when she said we only have her in the open air in case she has a heart attack and we need to move quickly. We will control her environment. When the doctor says it's okay a doctor came in and explained that she is very sick but getting better. I simply didn't believe him I was terrified. One of the other parents in the NICU took me aside and told me that the doctors here wouldn't lie to me for any ability reasons. If he thinks my girl is going to get better she probably will. It was like he untied a knot in my stomach and made it a little easier. She pulled through and is healthy. The nurse's words must have sent you reeling. It's so good that the other parent was there to comfort you. What a roller coaster experience you have been through. I've told this story before. But whatever, I was broke as frick in Eugene, Oregon. Steady work was scarce. I smelled like shit, because I could barely afford to do my laundry, and often didn't even have detergent when I did do laundry. The holidays were close, so I took a contract job with the Salvation Army, ringing a bell. I'd stand on a cold sidewalk in the freezing pouring wind and rain on a sidewalk outside of Fredmere, wearing a thin grey zip-up hoodie, shivering and ringing for eight painful hours. This gorgeous soccer mom rolls up in her gigantic suburban assault vehicle. She steps out wearing a very tasteful tan camel haircoat, jeans, nice boots, her long blonde wavy hair draped across her shoulders. She walked past me with a disappointed look. When you're broke as shit, you get used to that facial expression from decent and good people, and you sort of condition yourself to shirk away like sorry I'm a smelly degenerate piece of shit who's near you anyway. More people come and go. Her giant sub is still out front, when I hear this very loud and aggressive woman bark, hey, at me. I turn and look, and it's her. She has a shopping cart overflowing with bags. She rolls up to me, shoves a hand in a bag and says, here, put these on. She handed me a very nice and expensive fleece beanie, a puffy fleece scarf and these very expensive looking, fleece lined leather gloves. It's absolutely freezing outside, you should be wearing more than that thin jacket. Do you have a home? I told her yes, while putting the new clothes on. They were so damn warm. I noticed the rain would beat up on the scarf then just roll away. A gust blew, and my ears didn't ring in pain. She said well, you need to eat, and handed me a bag of Jojos and a bag of chicken strips. I swear to god my stomach rumbled at the sight of the warm food. She stood in front of me and said, I've seen you here before. You were nice to my son, when he was having a bad day. You're a good looking kid, and you seem pretty smart. You deserve better than this. Go to school or something. Figure out a plan and follow it. You don't have to do live like this. I started to well up, but bid my tears back. She realized how awkward it all was, so she just said, okay, well. Merry Christmas, then walked off to her vehicle, loaded it up, and drove away. 
she showed me kindness and generosity at a time when I thought it was all gone, and she represented love from a demographic I'd grown to hate. She changed my perspective about humanity in less than a minute, and inspired me to aspire for more.